Adams Field, 1990. Zoom out a little bit, mate. Lovely. So this whole area is where my sightings come from. Oh, right. It's the Creepy Crawly Trail. The Creepy Crawly Trail. <laughs> <laughs> so Adams Field, Thylacine, 1990, in this sort of area. And by the way, Florentine Valley, which is this sort of area, that's where the last one was captured from the wild. Mm. Um, so in 1990, maybe 1991, we can't be specific on this, um, there are two separate accounts which add to the, the claim, the credence of this. Um, the first one, hunters were out in Adamsfield, uh, this sort of area we've got sort of behind us on the screen right now. Yeah. Um, but they were searching for wallabies, trying to like shoot them and whatever. Then all of a sudden, there's a rustle next to them. Right. An animal's been awoken, it's been startled, scared. It jumps up, tries to run away. One of the hunters gets scared, turns, shoots it, bangs it, dead, straight away, kills it. And after they kill it, they realise, hang on a second, what have we done? We've just, they look at the animal and they realise it's a thylacine. They've gone, oh my God, we've just killed a Tasmanian tiger. So that's number one, the sighting. Also, I should probably add, they did take some pictures of it. Now, the second one is a, is a fella called Rusty Morley. What He's an interesting name. guy, great name. Um, he had a, another name as well, but you see where it says like May Dana or something like that. Yeah. That's where he was in like Tyena. He's sort of around that area, so in the Thylacine Adamsfield area, right? Now, Rusty uh, lived in this sort of area. He took three Polaroids of a small mm. Thylacine carcass he found while he was out in the bush that he claims died of natural causes, right? Very interesting. Um, those photos I don't think have ever come to light. Uh, same with the hunters ones as well um but if you guys like watching want to see or listening want to see what adam sword looks like there's a youtuber who i interviewed called rob parsons really interesting guy outdoorsy guy in tasmania he did a big thing around adam's field looking for some huts and stuff because adam's field in the 1920s and 30s and whatever yeah. was a big mining place um because a few fellas had found this like uh metal i think it is called osmeridium right and at the time was like five times worth more than gold. So it was a very precious thing that they wanted. Um, and they set up a big camp there, huts and stuff, and they had like a post office, a little shop and all that. People were like trying to find out all this Osmeridium. Um, as time went on, that changed because it become less... Uh, like, uh, less expensive to mm. be or whatever because like something had happened where they created a different pen because Osmeridium was something used in like fountain pens or whatever. Right. And then it changed the big pen came and ruined that all. So basically, it, Adams Field at that point got left deserted. Um, if you want to see it, it's on Rob Parsons' channel. It's a really good video, like really interesting guy as well. But in that area, that's where Rusty uh, comes in because Rusty himself, the geezer, has had mad sightings, like quite a lot as well. Um, so in 1960, when Rusty was age 15, he said he, he first saw the tiger in a bush and he had the opportunity to shoot it with a shotgun, but he didn't. Um, he approached the bush and the tiger gave what appears to be a threat yawn before taking off. Uh, 1984, he had another sighting. 1990, This is the one we're talking about today. Um, he took a picture of these like thylacines, one, two, and three Polaroids of like uh, different aspects of the thylacine. Mm. And in 1991, he took a plaster cast uh, uh, next to the road of like what he thought was thylacine prints. 1996, he tracked thylacine around a the lake, then took a plaster cast from the lakeside. Right. These have been verified uh, by the thylacine research unit. Um, so these plaster casts um, were looked over, and they couldn't determine it to be anything else other than a thylacine. Right. So that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, can you rule out a fake? Probably not. Not too sure on that one. We move it on. 1992, and this is where the story gets interesting. A geezer by the name of Colin Coomber, who was a newspaper editor at the time, he's shown around 10 photos mm. of an alleged dead thylacine, which includes a bullet wound from an unknown thylacine researcher who had duplicated the, folo uh, duplicated the photos without the knowledge of hunters. So this person had seen these photos, duplicated them, and showed this newspaper reporter, Colin Coomber. Right. He told the story, and it goes like this. Uh, he tells about the photos and he says the full shot there's a full shot of an animal lying on its right hand side uh, you can see it's on like grass and whatever um, and there's also a close up side of its, of its left side of its head uh, with the mouth partially open um, there's a close up of the front foot 
Um, there's also a close-up of the rear feet and the ankle bone because they've obviously got like a, yeah. a unique sort of uh, ankle mm -hmm. bone that's quite long. Um, close-up of the thick tail. There's a close-up of the entrance hole of where they shot it um, and the exit hole as well. And there were a couple of other photos as well, but you can't remember what they were. Uh, Colin's still alive today. I'd love to interview him, by the way. That'd be really interesting. Yeah, that would be. Um, but... The, the thing that makes it all very complicated, and I just want to give a shout out here to the guy who runs the website where light meets dark, because without that website, I wouldn't have been able to come out with this uh, like summary of this story, right? Mm. It gets confusing because there are photos in circulation and there are photos of photos in circulation and it all becomes so confusing and stuff that I can't dissect on a podcast. Yeah. It's very, very weird, confusing, and I don't understand it. But if you want to see more and learn more about that, you go to that guy's website where light meets dark and look at the Adamsfield file scene and you will understand what I'm talking about because it's a mind boggler mm. and it gets mad confusing. And I honestly would not be able to keep you up to date with it in this podcast. But the two photos show a foot of the file scene. And they're on the website. There's a photo A, there's a photo B. Both of them have been declared a museum specimen. Yeah. So not the actual photos of like from the hunters. However, in photo B of the foot of the foot of the thylacine, there's an actual thylacine's foot on top of it, which is a museum specimen. Mm. Underneath that, there's another picture. And it's it looks like a Polaroid. And it's another foot. And um, I think the name, I think his name's Chris. Chris of Where Light Meets Dark, the website. He believes, or at least has alluded to, that could be the real deal. That picture underneath. Yeah. And they're using that foot of the museum specimen to compare the photo he's got to this foot here in the museum specimen. Yeah. Now, it's very confusing. There's a lot going on. Two separate accounts. You've got Rusty who saw a dead one. You've got the hunters that shot one allegedly. A year later, a, new, uh, a newspaper editor sees or gets these photos from an informant, a thylacine researcher. Mm. For me, that backs up the stories. No, yeah. And I personally, after hearing this story and reading this story and all that, I personally believe that could be legit thylacines still Sounds around like, yeah. at that time mm. what do you guys think about that because you let me waffle for a lot then so <laughs> what do you guys think about that so the the sightings that you just said about are they the most recent sightings that they've had in terms of like legitness yeah, yeah. um so there, there'll be sightings every day of people thinking they've yeah. seen a thylacine but in terms of like ones that are people actually think oh my god that could be legit then th these are it yeah yeah I just feel like now that technology is as good as it is, that if there was legit sightings, we would have seen about it in the last 20, 30 years. There is that point. Um, but yeah, it's but also then, said that thylacine could be a, a very nocturnal animal in terms of like you just won't see it in the day at all. True, yeah. What are you going to say, mate? Just on the, the technology point, though. It's like we just rediscovered the black nape pheasant pigeon. Yeah, true, actually. Right. The black nape pheasant pigeon, Rach, oh. uh, is a... A bird in Papua New Guinea hasn't been seen for 140 years. Never documented uh, via video or photo and did last year. Mm. Yeah. Mad. Yeah, that but it's mad. like, we've still got stuff like that happening though. The Saula is out in Vietnam, Vietnam yeah. and Laos. Laos. Laos? Laos? Laos. And that doesn't get sighted. But that's a big animal. That's like an antelope. Yeah. Oh, well, and that never anything. gets seen. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's possible thing. that it could be out there just not being seen. Yeah. So the only things I have with this, right, uh, my questions... How have these photos, if they exist, how have they never come out? Colin says he's seen about 10 of them, but mm. they've never come out. And he says himself, I don't know how they're not public. Also, who is this person doing this thylacine research? Who is it? And is this potentially the last thylacines? Or are they still out there today? Yeah, it's like it's the, the picture thing, though. It's like the government uh, search where it's top secret. Like, the government's they might just want to keep it hidden because like if they release yeah thylacine is still out there there's going to be someone who will go hunting for them absolutely yeah probably so if they know they're a super rare thing there's like a couple left they're not going to release it when there's the risk that somebody could go and just yeah. shoot them yeah they will keep it hidden won't they for a while I would have thought so like if someone finds one tomorrow 
that it's not going to be told in the news tomorrow. No. It, no. If, probably never, or in a few years' time, maybe. Yeah. 